hi guys welcome to my channel and to today's video and this is one of my videos on my shampoo formulating series now today i'm going to be focusing on one very very important ingredient that is used in shampoos and these are surfactants now surfactants are surface active ingredients that are necessary and essential to remove dirt and grease from the hair Surfactants usually carry a charge. It can be positive or negative depending on the type of surfactant that it is. Some surfactants even do have no charge. And these charges are essential because they help to determine what type of surfactant it is and also what the surfactant usually or really does. Now knowing about the charge on surfactants is also very important because it also helps you to be able to know which surfactants to combine. Some surfactants are not can't be combined because they are not going to be working. They are not they are not going to be able to work efficiently, especially if a surfactant is a cation and a cationic surfactant and another is an anionic surfactant. You can't combine a cationic surfactant with an anionic surfactant. This is why it is essential to know the types of surfactants and also what surfactants that you have. Now, there are four types of surfactants, and these four types of surfactants can further be grouped into primary and secondary surfactants. Now, the primary surfactants um, perform the most function of cleansing the hair. So, the primary surfactants usually are the major surfactants, and they perform the cleansing and the foaming functions in the shampoo. And these surfactants can be quite harsh, even though there are a bit milder ones available. Now, with the secondary surfactants, these surfactants do not really perform that cleansing function, but what they do is to help boost foam in a shampoo and also help the second, uh, help the primary surfactants. That is to boost foam, help in viscosity, and also make the shampoo more mild. So that is the purpose of the secondary surfactants. And these surfactants are used hand in hand with the primary surfactants to achieve the maximum benefits from the shampoo. Now, the types of surfactants that I'm going to be going into details will fall under either the primary surfactants or the secondary surfactants. Now, the first type of surfactant that I'm going to be talking about is the anionic surfactants. Now, anionic surfactants are um, surfactants that carry negative charge. And these surfactants are usually primary surfactants. They perform the most cleansing um, functions in the shampoo and they also ha um, have a lot of foam. Now these surfactants are usually used also in higher percentages in the shampoo and they are also easy to find around. Now examples of these anionic surfactants are the apple surfactants and also the SCI. I'll, pu I'll put the full meaning of SCI down so that you know the full meaning. I can't really pronounce it that well, that's why I'm just using the short form. Aside this, there are two other surfactants that I do consider as anion surfactants because they also do have a negative charge. And these are the surfactants that I'll, I'll be using also in my shampoo formulations because those are the anion surfactants that I can get around and usually they are milder than the synthetic ones. Usually they also, we also have the synthetic ones which are the sulfate the sodium lauryl sulfate and the other sulfates but you know we are really moving far 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 away from the sulfates so i'm going to be using the other types of anionic surfactants and these are the black soap the black soap concentrate so this is more of black soap dissolving it in water the concentrated version of it and also the castle soap so that's an also that is also another anionic surfactant that another surfactant that i consider to be an anionic surfactant so the second type of surfactants that I'm going to be talking about is the amputeric surfactant. Now these surfactants can either have a positive, negative, or low charge depending on the environment that it is in. So in alkaline solutions, these um, surfactants will have a, a negative charge. In acidic solutions, these um, surfactants will have a negative charge. And in solutions that are neutral, then this surfactant is usually going to have um, no charge on it. So this surfactant usually has this flexibility and this is what makes it have the ability to be used with other surfactants. You can use it with an anionic surfactant and it will work perfectly. So these amphoteric surfactants are usually mild and they don't really have that much cleansing effect. 
so they work in a way to support or to boost home so they are more like secondary surfactants and, and a good example of amputated surfactants is coco bintain which is why coco bintain is very good to be able to combine with a lot of surfactants available like you can combine coco bintain with anionic surfactants you can combine it with cationic you can combine it with a lot of surfactants so if you have coco bintain around just put it there and when we get when we get to the formulation stage, we'll see how to use cobintain. Now the next set of surfactants I'm also going to talk about is the non-ionic surfactants. Just like the name goes, non-ionic surfactants carry no charge at all. And these surfactants are also great, but they are very, very gentle and they do not produce a lot of foam and they also need to be used with other surfactants. So these surfactants are usually very, very mild and they make the shampoo also gentle. Examples of non-ionic surfactants are the cocoa glucoside and also the laurel glucoside. There are a lot of other non-ionic surfactants available but and these are the ones that I want to mention. Now the fourth type of surfactants I'm going to be talking about is the cationic surfactants. These surfactants are positively charged and they have these positive charge molecules that is able to bind to the negative charge of the hair. So these surfactants are usually used in conditioning shampoos and they are actually conditioning agents and so that is why they are used in conditioning shampoos. These uh, surfactants usually makes the hair soft, manageable and also helps to boost shine. They also help to promote soft and silky hair. So just like I said, these shampoos are used to make conditioning shampoos and conditioning shampoos are also known as um, two-in-one shampoos. So if you go to the market and you see these two-in-one shampoos, you know that, yeah, this is a conditioning shampoo and it is very mild because of the conditioning agents in these shampoos. Examples of these cationic surfactants that I know of are the polypartan, the ammonium chloride and also BTMS. Yeah, so the full meaning of BTMS will be down below so that you know what it is down for. So now that we know about the types of surfactants and what they are, I'd also like to delve more into the active surfactant matter. Now, every surfactant out there is made up of an active in it. So just to further explain in the actives, are the detergents and so the surfactants are made up of actives and water so if you have if you get any surfactants out there you know that the surfactant is liquid in nature so there is a, a solid matter and that solid matter is more like the detergent but that detergent has been dissolved in water and that is what we have as the surfactant that you are buying so every surfactant has different uh, different concentrates of the actives in it. Coco bintain has 30% of the actives in the surfactant and then coco glucoside has about 55% of the actives in the surfactant. Now if you are going to formulate a shampoo usually you need about 10 to 15% of the actives in the shampoo. This can be quite tricky to calculate because the surfactant that you have is not 100% surfactant. If it were to be 100% surfactant, you would have been able to just use that to calculate your total surfactant matter for the shampoo. But here lies the case where your surfactant is made up of different percentages of the active. So we have to calculate the percentage of actives for our surfactant. And that is what we are going to be doing next. So let's say we have two surfactants that we are going to be using to formulate our shampoo. That is cocoa glucoside and cocoa bintain. Now the cocoa glucoside usually has an active surfactant matter of 55% and then cocoa bintain has an active surfactant matter of 30%. Now in a basic shampoo formulation, we know that we need a total of about 15% of ASM in our shampoo. So let's say that we are going to be calculating the 15% ASM for these two surfactants. Here is how we go about it. Now to calculate the total ASM, you need to do sort of like a guesswork of the allocation to help you in the calculation. So personally, I decided to allocate 19% of the total um, formulation to glu cocoa glucoside and then 17% of the total formulations to cocoa bintain. Now when I do this, 
what I do is to um, calculate the allocation by the percentage of actives in the in the surfactant to give me the percentage of the active for the products that I am going to formulate. So if you look at the first calculation for the cocoa glucoside, I multiplied my team by the 55% and it gave me 10.5%. And then I multiply the cocoa bintin, which is the 16%, by the 30% of the cocoa glucoside, and I had 4.8%. So if you add the 10.5 to the 4.8, you get a total active surfactant matter of 15.25, which is way around 15%. So this should tell you that um, in the Total formulation, you need 19% of cocoa glucoside and then 17% of cocoa bintin. Now, if you do this um, allocation and then you calculate the total ASM and then it is not up to 15%, you just have to tweak the calculation a bit. Just try to increase it more, to increase the two surfactants more to see if you get to 15%. And if you get it that um, ideal amount, then you know that you have uh, the total surfactant matter in your shampoo. So the final result here tells us that in writing the formula for a shampoo with the total ASM of 15%, we will need 19% of cocoa glucoside and then 17% of cocoa bintin. This is um, basically how to do the calculation. So this is essentially how to calculate the active surfactant matter for your shampoo. Now, this is very essential because if you have a lot or you have different types of surfactants or you want to change your formulation, you just play around with the calculation till you get the right one or the right combination that you need. That's where you put it into the formula. Now, if you have any of the surfactants that maybe you do not know the active in it, what you have to do, and if maybe your retailer or your manufacturer did not really indicate the actives and it just try as much as possible to google the name of the surfactant and just find out about the active surfactant matter in that particular surfactant so that will give you a fair idea of the active and it and how best you can calculate it to get your total active surfactant matter for your shampoo formulation now that we are able to um, calculate our total actives for our shampoo then you are pretty much okay to be able to write a formula. So my next video is going to be on writing our own formula based on the usage rates, okay? And also based on our total actives that we have calculated. I hope this video was very, very insightful. And if it was, just give this video a thumbs up as always. And also if you are a new person and you haven't subscribed to the channel, Make sure that you do subscribe to the channel for more amazing video and informative ones as this. Thanks a lot and I will see you same time in my next video. And until then, as always, do stay blessed.